Hey everyone, this is Jason. Hey, I'm tearing out this mud pan and I saw a good opportunity to make a video real quick on pre-slopes, liners, how to do curbs. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube about guys just making feeble attempts to do a curb. What they're doing is they're stacking up three 2x4s right here. And then they're running their liner over that 2x4s and then want, and putting backer board on it and drilling screws through the right through the rubber membrane. That's your waterproofing membrane, and why would you want to puncture that? That makes no sense at all. They say put screws right here in the front of your curb, like that's not going to get water there. But then they claim, as long as you paint red guard all over that surface before you tile it, it won't get water to it. And this is proof that that is not true. This wall right here was coated with red guard when I tore this tile off in the backer board. Take a look at that screw right there that's low, too low. They punctured their liner. That screw's all rusted because it got wet. Now if Red Guard's going to stop your water from getting in there and penetrating that stuff and cause rot and damage, this is the second shower we've torn out in this house that was leaking, that was fully coated with Red Guard, and they punctured their liner down there too low. Now the claim is the red guard's going to not let water ever get to that. That's proof that that is not a fact. If you're not using a pre-slope, your water's going to back up. It's going to end up going up there. It's going to cause problems in your drain. It's going to cause problems in your curb. It's going to just cause problems everywhere. This is another mistake they always make. Every video I see, they're cutting the liner right here at the curb, and they leave that exposed like that. This shower was leaking right here. You can't do that. Your liner at both sides of your curb needs to extend out at least to the outside of your curb on the wall up here. They're cutting the liner, cutting it right here, and they're no, there's nothing flashing up right here. You need protection back there. Obviously, Red Guard isn't going to stop the water from getting in there. If you're not using a pre slope, you're not doing a pan correctly. You need a pre slope. You need the liner on top of your pre-slope, you need to put pebbles around your drain, and then you need to do your final bed of mud. And you need to use dry pack and quit putting too much water in this in this mortar. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to end up tearing this out. I'm going to do a, a video on the proper way to put in a liner, to put in a curb without puncturing your liner with screws every two inches all the way across. It's just laziness, you guys. If, if you're using 2x4s in your curb, wrapping your liner over and waterboarding it or using Dura-Rock and putting screws right through your waterproofing liner, then your shower is going to fail. And they'll always say, oh well, I've been doing this for 20 years and never had a problem. Yeah, well, I guarantee you that if I could track the guy down that did this, he would say the same thing. There's problems, you just can't see them until you tear it apart. Why would you want to put that in your customer's house and not do things the right way? So I see a lot, a lot of bad information as far as mud pans go on YouTube. And I'm going to start doing my best. My goal is not to make 50 million subscribers and make the most videos and be the one that's on YouTube the most. My goal is to bring the most sound information that's backed by industry research. You can't just form an opinion and say, pre slopes are dumb, leave them out. That, that doesn't work that way. Take a look at this. The reason you need a pre-slope, the concept behind a mud pan, I dumped water in there on that dry pack about 10 minutes ago. It's already almost all soaked in. The reason you use a pre-slope is when mud or water gets in your grout and goes down to your mud pan, you want that to soak in like that did and go down to your liner that's sitting on a slope that flows to the drain. Your drain needs to have gravel around it so that that water that gets under there, because you can't stop it, grout's not waterproof. You want that to leach down to your drain and then filter back through those rocks. If you're, if you're throwing a liner on a flat subfloor, you're just creating a swimming pool just to hold water in here and cause damage like that did over there. This whole shower leaked and was causing problems. 
Eventually it'll catch up to you if you're not doing it right. You need to use a pre-slope. You need to form and pour a solid concrete curb and I'm going to be showing you how to do that pretty soon as soon as I redo this. I'm going to show you the right way to put in a liner, the right way to do a curb, and not put on some clown show like these guys that are so called professionals and don't even know or understand how a mud pan works. They say oh well it's capillary action, water will wick up the wick up the walls if you put your concrete board in the in down into your mud. Well that's garbage. That's stupid. They have no they have no information to back that. If you do if you do a research on capillary action in a mud pan you'll find that that's just bogus. They've done countless mock-ups where they make a mud pan and flood it with water for months and it, it, there's it just do your own research if videos are telling you not to do a pre-slope pounding nails in their curb over through their liner don't even watch the video it's useless information you're going to have a shower that fails just like this one did so as soon as i get this all torn out and start putting it back together we'll see you back then and i'll show you how to do things the right way See you then.